All right. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Let's get a little bit of ambiance in here. How's that? So, now that we have finally uh, started, we can uh, <laughs> describe how this is going to go. Yeah, get, get cozy, get a snack, and uh, we will uh, we'll begin. Um, I will say, uh, <laughs> if, you're, if uh, people haven't arrived yet, that's all right, because there'll be a little bit of, a, um, of an opening where I describe what's going to happen. Uh, since this is a whole new system for us, um, <laughs> I, I feel like I should probably explain things a little bit. Um, but uh, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, welcome to uh, the first and, uh, I suppose, test episode of Chat Chronicles, um, which is a little bit of a, it's a concept that I've been working on for quite some time, I'll say, uh, in the background to all the other things that I, that I have been working on. Um, uh, now, uh, when I initially started working on it, the, um, the project was far, far bigger. And so, um, that's been sort of plunked away on it at the, in the background while I've been working on all the actual D and D campaigns that we run around here. Um, <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like it lately, but we do play D and D here. <laughs> um, and so uh, I, I had this sort of plan that I've been working on for a while, um, but uh, <laughs> I, I realized that um, the one that I was working on, the adventure that I was working on, was very long, um, and it would be multiple episodes long, so I decided to actually sort of um, pause that one and uh, make a shorter one, a test one. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to test out the concept. This is the proof of concept concept stream, um, in which we uh, we give it a shot. There'll be some some issues probably to work out. Um, things might not go perfectly, but that's okay because that's uh, that's the goal. We need to uh, iron out all of the the problems now, uh, so that we can start making this a more regular thing. Um, these. Adventures do take a little bit to write, so uh, <laughs> it will be. Um, it won't be happening like every week or anything like that, um, unless there's uh, an active one that I finished that takes more than one episode. Uh, then we could probably keep doing it weekly. But um, in between each of the different adventures, there will be probably at least a month or so of work that needs to be done. So these are occasional streams, um, but I think that they'll be fun. So. Uh, <laughs> there's the explanation of how I've been working on these. So, uh, first things first, we have a new chat command. Exclamation mark CC. Um, if you see anyone come in here and they're like, what the heck is this? There's your uh, exclamation mark CC command to quickly explain it to them without having to type. And as it says, Chat Chronicles is a choose-your-own-adventure series where uh, you guys, chat, control the story via the Twitch poll system. Um, so you will have the, the ability to vote on the course of action that you feel the character should be taking next. And uh, we'll see if chat, the rest of chat agrees with you. And that will be, uh, that'll be how the whole thing works. So, um, hmm, where should we, one moment please. All right, I'm back. Now then, shall we, uh, shall we take a peek at, uh, what we're going to do? I think let's get started. We'll, uh, we'll start the introduction. 
No. Because uh, this this will require just a little bit of explaining. So, first things first. Um, this is our, our other screen for the moment. Um, you it, you'll see it uh, be modified in just a moment, but uh, this will be our gameplay screen um, for the time being. And uh, as you can see in the the bottom. Uh, corner over here, uh, the left-hand corner. Um, that is where your dice rolls will happen. <laughs> um, an omen of good luck for you there uh, in the bottom left. But uh, that's where you can see the result of the most recent roll, um, which we will be doing on occasion. Whenever uh, you guys vote to do something, welcome, Sour. Uh, we're just we're just getting started. I'm just sort of explaining the system right now. Um, I figured people would trickle in uh, slowly, so we're just sort of giving a little explanation off the top, so that uh, everybody understands how this works, and uh, then we can get started. We have not started yet. Uh, so again, bottom left is where your roles will be. Uh, immediately to the right of it is. Uh, a point of inspiration. Um, during this stream, you will all have a communal point of inspiration, um, which at any point, if you guys bought a roll uh, and want to re-roll it, um, you will just have to all spam in the chat that you want to use your inspiration. If I see a lot of people saying that they want to use it, then we'll do an actual vote on uh, whether or not you guys use your inspiration for that roll. Uh, you only have one point for the whole adventure. So use it wisely. Uh, but again, this is a, a streamlined and uh, concise adventure that uh, is designed for testing the concept. Um, for this stream, no. Um, that's the, the, the inspiration by is uh, more for the D&D streams. Uh, it doesn't have too much application on this stream with the, with the channel points. Um, so that's why I gave you guys your own point of inspiration to use. Um, at any point during the adventure. Uh, so you have it right off the top, and you can use it on any of the rolls that you make. Um, uh, but to use it, um, since you guys have to, to actively use it, and it's not uh, going to be in every single poll, um, you, guys have to, uh, <laughs> you guys have to spam that you want to use it in chat. Um, just everybody, if everybody's saying that they want to use it in chat, then um, we'll do an actual vote for it. But until then, I, I won't be adding it to every single poll. Otherwise, it would, it would just be there constantly. Uh, so again, those are your roles. That's your inspiration. Um, up in the top corner here, this will be your character's stats. Uh, it's not there yet, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, your character will be along this left-hand side. Uh, speaking of characters, the very first decision you guys will have to make is, of course... What character do you want to play? Um, now, <laughs> obviously, I can't let uh, collective chat design their own character because we would be here for uh, probably 17 hours. Um, so, <laughs> instead, um, you guys will uh, get to decide one of three characters. Uh, as this is a choose-your-own-adventure story, and so you won't have a party. Uh, this will be a solo adventure in which chat chooses a single character to play as. Um, now, if you guys die, then uh, we might run the adventure again at a later date, and uh, you'll be able to choose one of the other characters. Um, so if you do die, you might be able to play one of the other characters, but for now, we will just select one. Um, so here is uh, the character sheet. Um, I'll be adding it to the other screen, but this is... This is the, the look for now. Um, so we have a choice of three characters, the very first of whom is uh, Cypria Marchand. Now, Cypria Marchand is a uh, elven moonstone wizard uh, affiliated with the arcane scholars of the moonlit path. Uh, now, as a wizard, she is not particularly strong. Um, and uh, as a... 
uh, cloistered scholar who does not interact with a lot of people, usually has her nose deep in a book. She's not particularly charismatic. Uh, but what she is, is intelligent. Uh, and her, her stats will be based on intelligence, like any good wizard. Uh, in her inventory, she has a moonstone wand, uh, 30 gold pieces to start off, uh, water skin and rations to help her survive the journey. Uh, and then as far as her abilities, she has access to certain spells or sorceries, as they call them at the Moonlit Path. Uh, she has two uses of Moonbeam, two uses of Magic Missile, Firebolt at will, Mending at will, and two uses of Shield. Now these spells operate relatively similarly to the D&D &D spells. Um, and you will have choices as to whether to use them, should you choose this character. Uh, she also has several traits. Uh, traits are things that um, are sort of reflect the, the build of the character um, and may come up along some of your choices. They might give you access to certain other things. Uh, so, uh, Cypria's first trait is that she's keen-minded, and so uh, her strength lies in intelligence. So that will tell you that um, her build is based around the intelligence stat. Um, so that is a good thing to keep in mind when considering your choices. Um, the next is, uh, as a moonlit scholar, Cypria has a deep knowledge of the arcane. Uh, anything to do with magic is tends to be her expertise, and so you may get some extra information involving anything magical if you play as Cypria. Uh, last one is through her fey ancestry. She's immune to a magic that could charm her or put her to sleep. I added that it would... Um, I, I improved it from the D&D one slightly just so that it uh, felt more worthwhile. And the last part of each character is their motivation. Uh, each of the three characters has a different reason for beginning the adventure. Um, but we will, uh, we'll get to those in a bit. So, um, the adventure today, the old moon, is uh, a hunt. And so, uh, each of these characters are setting out to the forests around Ostergrave in Bastila, uh, just south of the Midnight Vale. As each of our characters has learned that uh, there is a beast in the area that is harming innocents and uh, needs to be put down. Now, each of our three characters has a different motivation for why uh, they are in the area and why they are hunting this particular monster. But uh, each of them shares the goal of finding the monster and killing it. So, uh, back to Cypria. Cypria's motivation is known as the turn of the old moon. Cypria seeks knowledge of the old moon, uh, which is cult-like worship of a sinister waxing moon that brings with it the transformation of horrific beasts and monstrosities. Uh, so Cypria's motivation is knowledge. She wants to learn more about what's going on and how to potentially stop it. Our next character is Harriet Lautrec, who is a human cleric of life. She's a cleric affiliated with the healers of the Vigil of Brava, and her stat is Wisdom. Um, she is based around, around uh, a Wisdom build, so keep that in mind. Um, but she is not particularly fast or strong. Uh, but what she does have is charisma. She is kind-hearted and sweet, and so she tends to make friends a little bit easier than others. In her inventory, she has... Whoops, that's not in there. Um, <laughs> in her inventory, she has a holy symbol, uh, a little bit of extra money as well in comparison to the others, uh, 40 gold pieces, uh, sticks of incense, as well as water skin and rations. <laughs> uh, as far as spells, she too has a list of spells. Um, she has 
miracles, uh, as they're called in the church. She has uh, the light cantrip. Um, she has guiding bolt, uh, which she has a bunch of uses of. Uh, so you won't have to worry about wait, running out of that. Uh, and she has um, cure wounds, single use, and uh, a single use of ceremony. <laughs> uh, as far as traits, Harriet is wise. Uh, so her build is based around wisdom, and that is important to keep in mind. Um, her second trait is that um, she is uh, soft-hearted. And so in spite of uh, the typical stats, as you can see, uh, her stat breakdown is a little bit different. She actually gains a plus two to her charisma rolls uh, because she seeks to do good in the world, and her warm disposition, though it may be seen as a weakness to some, uh, is, a, is a strength to uh, those that she's trying to help. And uh, her last trait is that she is a church acolyte, uh, which means that her time with the church grants her knowledge of religion and the forces that oppose it. Now, Harriet's motivation for the hunt tonight is uh, penance and peace. Harriet blames herself for a past act of cowardice in the face of a terrible beast. And because of her reluctance to act, someone close to her died. She seeks to right her wrong by laying the fearsome creature to rest. And now, our last character. is Lawrence the Hunter, a mysterious figure. Um, even his race is unknown. Uh, and he is a blood hunter. He is a hunter of beasts with a dark and mysterious past. And that's all you get. Uh, now, he is built around strength. Uh, he is a, a strong person. <laughs> Rude, Al. Um, uh, and has a bit of constitution as well, uh, and is uh, not not unwise, uh, though he isn't particularly quick, and uh, his uh, intelligence tends to suffer from his uh, his reckless fury. In his inventory, he has. His trusty weapon, a silvered sword, as well as uh, 30 gold pieces, uh, and then water skin and ration like the others. Now his traits are, yes, Tasty, we're getting to that. <laughs> um, his traits are that he has a powerful build, uh, he's a strong person, uh, and so he's built around strength. Um, his power is a little bit different than the typical blood hunter, but um, we're, we're bending it. Um, uh, his Lawrence's power lies in his uh, raw brute strength. Uh, his second trait is infernal tongues. Lawrence can speak, read, and write infernal, which might come up. Uh, his third trait is blood magic. Um, so... Uh, to put it vaguely, Lawrence gains an advantage in battle when his blood has been drawn. And you'll see what that is if you, if you pick our third character. Uh, and because the others have magic, to balance that out, Lawrence has a fourth trait. Uh, his fourth trait is his intimidating presence. Uh, his fearsome presence can be used uh, in his choices to... Um, maybe uh, alter or enhance uh, some of the options that he can choose. And Lawrence's motivation... <laughs> Try to move it out of the way of chat. Who got silenced? <laughs> chat, get out of the way so we can read this. Maybe I should get out of the way too, huh? <laughs> uh, Lawrence's motivation is... The hunt. 
Lawrence has heard talk of a fearsome beast that lives in the forests around Ostergrave. He joins the hunt this night to rid the world of such a creature. This hunt in particular is personal. <laughs> well, um, Balcony, this entire adventure is inspired by Bloodborne, so I think you'll be satisfied. Now, the very first important decision that we will have to make in this adventure is, of course, picking our character. Okay, <laughs> um, to give another brief summary for those who just arrived... You have Cypria Marchant, the wizard, who's built around intelligence and has a selection of offensive and a couple cantrip spells. Um, whose motivation is gaining knowledge on the old moon and how it transforms uh, people into beasts. The, the next character is Harriet Lautrec, the human cleric of life, who's built around wisdom. Um, as well as has access to a couple different miracles that she can use to heal, as well as harm. She also has the light cantrip uh, and a single use of ceremony. Uh, her motivation is um, blaming herself for her past cowardice and attempting to right that by um, gaining holy vengeance on a, in a beast that has harmed someone that she cared about. Our last character is Lawrence the Hunter, who is uh, an unknown race of blood hunter, um, who's built around strength, has a silvered sword, and can speak infernal, has blood magic, and an intimidating presence. His motivation is the hunt. Now then. Let's uh, let's let's bring our options up on screen, shall we? One, two. Uh, they're not going to be the same size. Please don't interpret that as bias. I'm just not going to take the time to type in the perfect size for them, okay? <laughs> They'll be similar. That's about right. Okay. Now then, let's let's get a little bit of ambiance in here too, okay? Uh, for starters, we're going to do a test poll just to make sure everything's working. Then we will do the um, then we'll do the poll that uh, that counts. All right, perfect. So as you can see, your choices are appearing on screen. So even the VOD will get to see what you guys decide. Uh, and that will be real-time changes in the in the poll that uh, reflect on the screen. I'm quite happy about the uh, the setup we got going here. Um, now the polls appear at the top of chat for you guys, so make sure you pay attention to those. Uh, don't miss the poll, or uh, <laughs> you won't be able to vote, and then you'll have missed a shot to affect the journey. Um, now, in regards to the polls, uh, most of these polls will not be channel point activated um, because I don't want one person to be able to spam all of their channel points and basically decide the adventure for themselves. Um, I want to keep it fair so that everybody's vote is equal because uh, I know that some people here are a little bit, um, 
newer and therefore just won't get a say if I if I enable it all the time. Now there will be a couple. If we ever tie a vote, if there's ever a, a perfect tie, then we will enable channel points with the, the two tied options. Or if there's ever a vote that we particularly feel needs channel points, then we can spam those as well. Um, so there will be a couple opportunities to use them, and I want to try to implement them better in the future. But for the test stream, we're going to try to not use them very much unless there is an exact tie. Um, so if it does tie, we'll, we'll redo the poll with the two options that tied, and then um, enable channel points to allow you guys to skew the vote like that. That way, it feels like everybody's participating, and we don't have to... Um, feel as though one person directs the adventure by themselves just because they've been watching this, the channel for longer. Now then, the next important poll that is uh, going to happen is, of course, <laughs> I, I will say, I. Before you guys choose um, your character, I, I did design this one to be relatively straightforward. Um, and it's not particularly incredibly difficult. So choose the character that you like most. Don't try to ration your characters thinking that one of them will die and you'll have to come back later. Because there is a very good chance that you guys could just live through this adventure. So don't don't try to, to ration it as, as um, well, who do we want to save for later? Uh, think of it as, who do we want to play right now? I would say prioritize that. <laughs> it is Bloodborne based, but it's not going to be hard right off the bat since this is the test stream. Um, I will say, if you guys survive the adventure, then um, there's always a chance that that character could come back. Um, oh, and of course, this takes place in the living world, so there are chances that any of these three characters, even if you don't pick them today, they could always come back and be NPCs in your D&D campaigns later, because uh, they've been written with full backstories and everything, so no matter what, you're going to see them again, um, but this is choosing who you want to be as your main character right now. I will also add, for your consideration before picking your, uh, your uh, character, um, a lot of choose-your-own-adventure books, if anybody has ever read any of them, or participated in any sort of similar thing, will have an option where you pick the, the choice and your character just instantly dies. Um, <laughs> we're not going to do that here because that would feel really unfair. Um, so you actually do have a health bar and hit points and all that. So choosing wrong choices will drain from that. Um, so... Usually in the Choose Your Own Adventure novels, it's because the, the writer knows that you're just going to back right up again and choose something else. So they don't mind killing you instantly. But for this, if you die, you die and that character is dead. So um, I didn't put any instant death options. So keep that in mind. There's no option to just walk right off a cliff and die. Um, though, of course, your choices will still matter as you will have health and you can be injured and, and harmed. So... Um, just keep in mind that there's no instant, instantaneous deaths. <laughs> yeah, I feel like some people have have um, experience with uh, choose your own adventures novels from being a kid. I definitely did. Um, there's also yeah, there's like what Warlock of. Um, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called. <laughs> now then, shall we? Uh, shall we pick our character? With uh, with all that knowledge in mind, stay in the hunter stream. Yeah, you just hang out with the doll. That's 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 a good end. Just hang out with the doll. Live happily in a little cottage in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> in the middle of the sky. That's kind of comfy. That could be a good end. She's nice.
Alrighty. You guys have a choice to make. So let's make it. Yeah, I get to stare at the weird spires. Now, <laughs> I'll make this poll decently long so that everybody has a, a chance to choose. We'll make it like, uh, I don't know, three to four minutes or something like that. Do you guys want it for five minutes or three minutes? As I, as I type out all the choices. Three it is. And uh, I think we will turn off channel points for this one so that one person doesn't get their way. Uh, this will have to be a vote for everybody. All right, ready guys? Time to select your character between Cypria Marchand, the elven wizard, Harriet Lautrec, the human cleric, and Lawrence, the unknown blood hunter. Make sure you uh, you pass your vote before uh, time is up. Don't uh, don't forget that it's at the top of the chat there. Make sure your uh, your voice is heard as we select our character. <laughs> all of the characters are fun, so. Um, I've, I've designed specific things for all of the different characters, so we'll all be good. Alrighty. Half the, uh, the time has, um... <laughs> Falcon, you say Lawrence is, is good too, but you didn't vote for him. your money my, where your mouth is. Don't forget that I can see these votes. I can see how many people voted for it. You guys can too. <laughs> I voted for it so that he had at least one vote. I voted for Lawrence. I figured he wouldn't win, so I voted for him. You can see underneath each of them um, that uh, it says that there's how many votes for, for each. Seven votes total. Yeah, I kind of figured <laughs> with you guys that you'd pick one of the women. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, each of them have interesting interactions, so it, it certainly might be. I don't know Fire Emblem enough. <laughs> All right, the winner. It's okay. He was wisdom based blood hunter. Don't worry. Winner is the cleric. Harriet Lautrec. Yeah, Tasty. 
I mean, I wrote this in the past couple of days. So. <laughs> so, yes, it was recent. So, there's your character portrait in the top left corner there. You are playing as Harriet Lautrec. So, let's, uh, let's get your stats in here. Um, I picked one by default so that I could see where they were. So these are not your stats, but we will adjust them once we figure out where exactly we want it all to sit. That's good right there. It'll become easier to see in a second when we switch off the screen, don't worry. All right, now let me, uh, let me copy paste in her stats. And then we'll be ready to go. Now, unfortunately, you don't get that much health. You guys did not pick, uh, you did not, did not pick the high health guy. There you go. That's your health. That's better. So, we are now ready to begin. As I said before, in case you missed it, um, your rolls are in the bottom left. Your stats are along the left there. Now, those will be affecting the rolls that you make, um, though not all of them will necessarily be relevant. I wanted to base it around D&D &D just so that it resembled it. Um, and uh, it's not a typical stat allocation, it's just uh, it's for a bit of balance. And then your hit points are above your stats, uh, and right below your character portrait. And you're playing as Harriet Lutrec. Alrighty, let's lock some of this in so that I don't have to move it around as much. Don't lock that, move that up. Perfect. Don't lock that either. You need to move that up as well. All right. I think we are ready to go. All right. Now then. So, our story today begins in the Seven Baronies of Bastila. Where a monster has been plaguing the forests just outside of Ostergrave, which is one of these small hamlets uh, under the control of Last Haven just south of the Midnight Vale, a towering range of mountains. Now, your character, Harriet, has uh, arrived in Ostergrave in order to hunt said beast. So, to begin, Let's set the mood a little bit better, shall we? I find my eyes drawn to the sky as night unfurls its silken wings on ashen clouds and ink black tides the old moon starts to sing
Nada. Let's start. So, an evergreen forest stretches its arms along the southern ranges of the Midnight Vale. There, nestled at the base of the mountains, sits the hamlet of Ostergrave. Cabins built from stacked logs sit in rows, bathed in the orange glow of sundown. You'd only just arrived, and yet still, you must already depart. You seek a beast that lurks in a cabin in the forest, a creature the townsfolk call Cain. But perhaps there is time still to purchase some supplies for your journey before you leave. And so, our first decision You decide to A, visit the shop before you leave, or B, simply depart. You have no time to waste and you ought to uh, get moving before it gets too dark. So your first poll is active there at the top of chat. Make sure that you uh, you vote and have your voice heard. So that you can uh, decide where we go next. All right, looks as though uh, visiting the store seems to be the popular choice. I think we'll do slightly shorter polls. I think that'd be that'd be all right. Two minutes is okay for some decisions, but I think one minute is probably the, the good time for, for most of them. I think this is a one minute pull. Uh, more of a, a one minute pull. So, uh, you decide, uh, unless suddenly things change, uh, you decide to visit the store. So, uh, you make your way to the end of a narrow dirt road. Uh, there sits an old log cabin with a crooked wooden sign that reads General Goods. The orange glow of candlelight illuminates one of the windows, still open. You creak open the door and make your way inside. The crackling hearth inside warms you as a voice calls out, What can I help you with? The owner of the voice is a gruff looking, half orcish man. He stands behind a counter splayed with merchandise. Uh, you make your way over to the counter 
and survey the goods as the shopkeeper explains what he's got in stock. Uh, and so, our next decision will be what to buy. Uh, and this one can potentially be made more than once, uh, as you do have currently 30 gold. So, the shopkeeper has in stock some cured meats, health potion, holy water, throwing dagger, or you can simply decide that uh, none of that interests you, and you can instead leave the store. <laughs> Instantly, somebody wants to leave. <laughs> no, not feeling the store. <laughs> All right, somebody wants holy water. Somebody wants to leave. I see how it is. We might get our first tie unless more people start voting. So again, your options are cured meats uh, for 10 gold, a health potion for 20, holy water for 10, and throwing dagger for 10, or simply leaving without buying anything. Uh, and again, you have 30 gold, or you have 40 gold in your inventory, sorry, uh, as you are Harriet. I should have uh, corrected that. You do have 40 gold. Uh, it looks like we might get our first tie, which is good. That means we can use channel points and test that out. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the winner is Holy Water. So, uh, you decide to purchase Holy Water, uh, and the, the merchant hands you a small uh, sort of spherical bottle filled with a, a glistening and clear Holy Water. It sparkles as you tuck it away into your pack, as, and you hand over the required 10 gold. Uh, so, uh, you can now uh, purchase more if you wish. You now have 30 gold remaining. Uh, I'm going to take holy water out of the options. Or you can uh, choose to, to leave. Alright, so again, 30 gold remains. Uh, we're going to shorten this poll to one minute, so make sure you get your vote in. Uh, so you begin to peruse the rest of the wares that uh, the merchant has stored for you. Uh, he still has a small package of cured meats, throwing daggers, and a health potion should you desire it. Uh, and uh, you seem to uh, to focus in on the 
the cured meats. Uh, and so, uh, with another 10 of the, the 30 gold remaining, uh, unless suddenly there's an upset, you decide to, uh, to purchase a small parcel of cured meat. Uh, so you hand over another 10 gold to the merchant, leaving you now with 20. And he hands you the parcel of cured meats, uh, which you can smell sort of the herbs on it as you tuck it away into your pack. Now, uh, one more pull. Either way. Um, we are going to do one last shop pull uh, with the health potion, throwing dagger, or leaving. And it'll be another short single minute poll. So, uh, as you now have 20 gold remaining, you could choose to spend the rest of it on a health potion, um, spend a bit of it on a throwing dagger, or simply leave with what you have. What, what just happened? Why'd that go away? <laughs> what, what just happened? Excuse me? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, the pull is still going. I don't know why it deleted off the, the screen. I guess this isn't an incredibly vital one to have on screen. If it does it again, I will take the time to try to fix that. Um, very strange. Not sure why that happened. I don't like that. All right. So you voted to leave with uh, what you have. And so you say your thanks to the shopkeeper. Uh, and say your goodbyes, uh, who, and the shopkeeper gives you a, a small grunt of acknowledgement and a little nod. Uh, the door creaks open once more as you make your way back out into the cold night air. And so now, with only one choice... You uh, wind your way through the main road of Ostergrim. Eventually arriving at the spiked logs that make up her outer walls. Uh, as you walk out of the gate, a guard nods his head, offering a soft, careful out there, friend. It's not safe in the woods at night, as you leave. You only get about 10 steps down the dirt road before the evergreen woods swallow you whole. The smell of fresh pine needles fill your nostrils as you begin your hunt. Your thoughts linger for a moment on your past failures, you should have stood your ground. But fear gripped you, and you ran. And now she's dead because of it. And the beast escaped. But no longer will you be ruled by fear. You will right the wrongs of the past, and make sure no one suffers the wrath of this creature again. You steel yourself for the trials ahead, and press on down the road. A sundown fades to night. It's well past sundown as you make your way into the forest. The tree branches paint shadows in the pale moonlight as you travel down the wooded path. Before long, the woods around you begin to stir.
A howl echoes from your right, then a snarl to your left. Glowing eyes watch you from between the pines. Slowly, a pack of wolves advance on you from the shadows. A wolf to your right carries a severed arm in its jaws, flesh still dripping with meat. Their lips curl back to show their teeth as the closest wolf lunges. Making a quick choice. You decide to. Uh, and you guys get an extra option for this one. Uh, there are your options. You can choose to bait the wolves using the meat that you just purchased. You can fight the wolves. Or you can run. So, as time begins to wind down, it seems like you guys have uh, <laughs> chosen probably to fight. So it would seem. <laughs> Aggro gang today, huh? Aggro cleric. See how that works out for you guys. Very in character, very in character is not run. Good RP, guys. Good RP. All right. So as time winds down, uh, you choose to fight the wolves. You grip your weapon, pulling your holy symbol from your side, and prepare to fight. One of the wolves dives at you, attempting to sink its fangs into your arm. And so, you must make an attack roll against the wolf to strike it before it strikes you. Uh, and so, we will use uh, your modifier, which is wisdom, to your dice roll. So we'll see if you guys hit. Rolling through the bottom left there, where you can find the results of your roll. How does that sound? So that will be a d20 plus 5. Let us roll your attack. Ooh, not bad. A 19 is a success. So, as the, as the wolf lunges at you, you raise your holy symbol and say a small prayer. A bolt of radiant light descends on the wolf before it can reach you, searing at the beast's skin.
the wounded wolf, the one that you struck, yelps in pain and runs off. The others seem to reconsider their assault, pacing at a distance, unsure of whether or not they should attempt to strike or if they'll be met with the same radiant fury that you just dealt to the to the other. Um, so, as uh, as the other wolves pace, you are granted another choice. As the wolves circle you, unsure of whether they should attack or run, you can attempt to intimidate the wolves, attack once more while they're being wary, or use this opportunity to run. Uh, intimidating the wolves would be a charisma roll. I mean, it'd be a little different if you were playing as Lawrence. <clears throat> All right. As the vote winds down, uh, you decide rather than taking the time to attempt to intimidate the wolves, you will instead use this opportunity to strike once more. Uh, and it seems that the wolves, um, after you pause for a moment to choose your course of action, they have decided not to run. Uh, and one of the wolves bearing its fangs at you is going to attempt to strike. Uh, so because you succeeded on the last roll, you're going to get to strike again. But uh, should you miss, you will be susceptible to an attack. So, we will make another attack roll for you guys, and we'll see if you hit. A 14 is also sufficient, uh, as these wolves' AC is not particularly high. So, as uh, the second wolf bears down on you, you quickly cast another miracle and sear the second one with light as well. With another yelp of pain, the second wolf runs off. The last wolf, uh, as it sort of joined its its companion in uh, in combat, is going to make a, a Constitution save to see if it. Um, to see if it sticks around or if it and to attack you or if it decides to run away. Is that also a 14? Oh, it was just also a 14. <laughs> I thought for a second it didn't roll because I can only see one roll there. But uh, in fact, it was just also a 14. Okay. Um, so uh, that will be a success for the wolf. So it uh, uses its oppor this opportunity to uh, strike out at you as uh, as you focus on the other wolf instead this one will attempt to strike uh, and so uh, this wolf will hit you And it will hit you for uh, three piercing. As uh, you 
are caught off guards by the other wolf, which refuses to retreat. Uh, so the wolf sinks its jaws into your arm as you begin to bleed. Leaving uh, one wolf remaining. <laughs> no, it's not, not that dangerous of a first encounter. Please. And so... Faced with yet another decision. You can attack, intimidate, or run once more. <laughs> this one had its chance to run away. <laughs> it's too late now, Wolf. Alright. Seems like uh, you're going to choose to attack once more. So we will uh, we'll get that roll ready. For you, that is a plus five. Alright, you decide to attack the remaining wolf. Uh, as it sinks its jaws into your arm. Uh, and then releases you... Summon up your holy weapon again and our, our uh, your holy uh, symbol again and are ready to strike once more. What's going on with these rolls? <laughs> I was like three fourteens and a couple. <laughs> I should have just thought that it wasn't changing the right thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, a 14 again will hit. And so the last wolf... will run off as well. Leaving you alone in the woods. Uh, with a, a bloody arm, but that's about it. Uh, still very much alive. You have uh, survived the wolves. So, with the, uh, with the wolves swiftly dealt with, you survey your surroundings. You quickly find what the wolves were defending. A little bit down the path and sort of off in the brush, the corpse of some poor fellow lies at the base of an old gnarled tree. Stomach split open and innards splayed across the grass. So, uh, I, I don't know if we need to do a poll for this. I presume you're probably going to examine the corpse. <laughs> I don't know. It might be just a waste of our time for me to pull this. This is what I have to sort of refine is, is whether or not we should streamline some choices or give you more choices. More choices are always good, but sometimes it's just a waste of our time if we know what you're going to do. <laughs> Something to consider. Let me write that down. Sorry, this is also this is the beta test stream, so you're gonna have to put up with me reflecting on the experience occasionally. Okay. So uh, we will choose streamline for now, since I figure you're probably gonna want to examine. Um, you. Check the, the pockets of the deceased fellow that the, the wolves were partially in the middle of consuming. And you find a small iron key. 
In his hand, the corpse clutches a rusted shovel, and next to him is a half-dug hole in the earth. Uh, perhaps he was halfway through unearthing something before he met his unfortunate fate with the wolves. Uh, no, the uh, the deceased fellow. The wolves don't have pockets, uh, and they also ran off. <laughs> So, um, as you uh, survey your surroundings, no wolf money, sorry. <laughs> uh, you have a choice. Uh, you can decide to uh, pluck the the rusted shovel from the, the dead fellow's hand and attempt to finish what he was doing. Or you can uh, just ignore it and, and carry on. You have more important things to deal with and this seems like a waste of your time. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like one person might decide this one by themselves. Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right. This gives us a good chance, then. Uh, we will repeat that poll with channel points enabled. I wanted to try this anyway this stream, so this is a good opportunity. Uh, might be worth it. Maybe anytime there's like a binary option to just always, always enable it, just so that we don't have to do the the repeated poll. Could be worth it to to think about that maybe. All right, this is going to be a short poll, so get ready to, uh, to skew it. Channel points enabled, go. <laughs> I swear, if you guys tie again, I'm going to be really mad, so don't tie. <laughs> You'll have wasted all your channel points. You don't want to tie. <laughs> Who's voting for ignoring carry on? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Somebody really wants that option. Yeah, somebody really doesn't want to dig. <laughs> All right. Uh, it looks like, rather than spending any time digging, <laughs> you will... Uh, <laughs> that was Senan who was doing that. Okay. <laughs> yes, but Senan spent 8,000, so that was why you lost. <laughs> All right. Uh, you decide to ignore the shovel uh, and tuck the old key away. And uh, rather than wasting any time sweating and attempting to unearth something in the dirt, uh, you turn back towards the old dirt path through the woods and carry on your journey, hunting for the old cabin in the forest. <laughs> now then, you depart from the old gnarled tree and continue along the dirt road. It's not too long before you arrive at a 
crossroads in your path. Uh, you estimate that, judging by the direction the paths are heading, uh, both paths will eventually take you toward your goal. It's just a matter of which one you want to take. One of the paths uh, is a rocky path off to your left, and the other is a higher road off to your right. Faced with a yet another choice, you decide to take A, the rocky left path, or B, the high right road. And we're turning those back off. <laughs> Left road or right road? You guys decide. All right. Seems like public, uh, the the general public is is leaning towards the higher right room. I'm curious about the logic. Why? Why? Why do you guys like that room? You guys have to help me beta test. So, what made you decide on the on the the right path versus the left path? Just random? Did you coin flip? <laughs> All right. Unless there's a sudden upset. <laughs> right is always right. Okay. I'll start putting more dangerous things along the right past them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, okay, so with your uh, decision made, uh, you choose to travel along the higher road that um, winds off to your right. You follow it for around a half hour before you hear a twig crack somewhere in the underbrush. Use the bright light of the moon to scan your surroundings. You spot a figure in the distance, huddled in the shadows under a towering pine. He sits, clutching his own knees among the dead pine needles and dirt. He notices you as you approach, his eyes wild with fright. You notice strange scratch marks around his neck and blood under his fingernails. The, the moonlight, he shouts as you approach. You have to stay out of the moonlight. You decide to. And you'll get a different option because you're Harriet. Mm. 
you decide to calmly explain to him that um, his fears are perhaps unfounded. Or B, empathize with him, which is an option you can take because you are specifically playing as Harriet. Uh, or B, you can choose to, ign or C, rather, you can choose to ignore him entirely and just carry on your way. She's an empath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seems you have chosen uh, a unique Harriet option. Uh, you choose to uh, to em empathize with the the rather fearful and um, the fearful men in rather unfortunate circumstances. So you join him in the shadow of the towering pine. Uh, he seems to calm himself as he sees that uh, you mean him no harm. He explains that his name is Henrik and that for the past year he's been hearing voices in his head. Tonight, as he made his way through the woods, he felt the voices grow louder as he stood under the moon. He explains that hiding in the shade, out of the reach of the moon's glow, quiets the voices. As you have experience with healing yourself, you ask him about any curatives he's taken to try and help his condition. He tells you that he's seen apothecaries and herbalists, but uh, that none of them were able to help his strange condition. His current plan is to sit huddled under this pine in the shadows and wait until daytime, and then make his way to Ostergrave. You think back on the people that you've helped in your time with the church, and you may make another choice. You can decide to uh, promise to return to Ostergrave once you're finished with your own task and aid him at a later time. You can choose to attempt to convince him to step out into the moonlight. Or you can simply wish him luck on his current plan and make your own way. poll is active, so make sure you vote if you're here. Have your voice heard.
It's what? You don't like option two? What's <laughs> the matter? <laughs> All right. So, uh, you promise Henrik that uh, you'll turn to, re you'll return to Ostergrave uh, when your business is through, and do your best to aid him. Then uh, he gives you a soft smile and thanks you for your kindness. Uh, you stand from the pine needles and. Resume your journey down the dirt path through the woods. So, as you continue down the dirt path, uh, you find it rejoin with the other split trail that you didn't take, uh, forming a single road once more, stretching off ahead of you. Now on the other side of the crossroads at the far end. Um, after only around 20 minutes walk down this, this straight road, uh, you see an old wooden cart in the center of the road. One of the cart's wheels sits broken beside it. Atop the cart is an odd-looking man, dressed in robes and a large hat that obscures his face from sight. Welcome, traveler, he calls out as you approach. Uh, you inquire as to the state of his cart. Ah, uh, broken, I'm afraid. Seems I won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Well, you're here. Would you like to buy anything? I am a merchant by trade, after all. Uh, he begins to pull pouch and parcel from his cart to display for you. Uh, but first off, uh, actually, no, you don't need this choice at all, actually. <laughs> Never mind. You're not Cypria. You don't need that choice. We'll streamline it. Make the choices faster. Since you don't need that one. So, now at uh, another shop. Uh, he offers you all manner of strange items. Uh, it seems to be a very eclectic group of, uh, of random assortment of goods. So, uh, in his shop, as he begins to display his items for you, uh, he has... A health potion, uh, much like the one they sold in the store um, back in Ostergrave, as well as a fire bomb, a lead elixir, silverware, all bundled up in a pile. Or you can simply decide to say goodbye and carry on your way without spending any money. Now, to remind you, you still have 20 gold remaining from your, uh, your previous shopping experience. So, uh, a face with another set of choices. What would you like to buy?
<laughs> I, I don't know whether to interpret that as nothing at all or... There was an option for nothing at all, so I'm not going to interpret that as nothing at all. Um... <laughs> well, that certainly throws a wrench into things. Uh, should we do that again? Someone want to decide? Okay, we'll do it one more time. Uh, I wish... I wish Twitch had an option to simply just run the same poll again. It, like, deletes all of your other stuff as soon as the poll ends. Makes you type it all in again. It would be nice if there was just, like, a rerun poll button. But, uh, I suppose they don't want to give us that option. Alright. There's the, there's the poll again. If you're tabbed out, please. <laughs> Tab it back in and vote. Have your voice heard. To remind you, you have 20 gold remaining. And uh, so you can, can choose to purchase something. You do still have a bit of money left from your, your previous shopping experience. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> you choose not to purchase anything from the strange merchant. Uh, and instead carry on your way. Uh, you decide to depart from the, the strange merchant. Uh, he gives you a, a jolly goodbye as you depart. And as you leave, you hear him humming a, a happy little tune that fades away as you distance yourself from him. Uh, you resume your journey forward down the old dirt path through the pine forest. Now, I have something that I need to figure out. <laughs> as again, this is the this is the the test. This is the beta test to see how all of the, the stream components are working together and how to streamline it. You guys could have bought something you chose not to. You had useful items. I'm trying to I'm trying to estimate stream time because uh, it might be better to split this in two. <laughs> let me let me see what I still have left. <laughs> I see. 
Taking your biases from your own D&D campaigns. I see now. Hmm. Okay. This is like, yeah, that might be, might be a better idea to split it in two. Because I don't want to go for, for a ton of time. And if splitting it in two might give me an option to adjust some of the stream things and streamline some stuff to make it look a little better and, and the setup as well. Hmm. What do you guys think? Should we split it in two and do the next half next Saturday? I got what I wanted. I got my beta test. I can do the second half next time. If you guys don't add your input, then I'm just going to split it, so. Have your voice heard? Now, before I, uh, before I decide to do the split. <laughs> you get to decide, and if no one else is here, then they, they lose out. I'm leaning towards split, so if you want to know what I'm what I'm thinking. Split time? Alright. I think it's a, I think it's fine to split it. Otherwise it'll be a very long stream. And splitting it now gives me a chance to to adjust for the future. So we will we'll call it here. If we come back and there's there's a different amount of people here or different people here, then we'll we'll see what to to switch up. But we'll we'll call it a night for now. That way I can I can pivot and uh, fix some things and uh, make sure that everything's working all right. Since this is a, a very new setup, and uh, I want to make sure that we can uh, adjust. All right, uh, then we will we will wrap up here. And we'll split it in two. So next Saturday, at about the same time, we will come back and we'll finish things up after I have a chance to look over what we currently have and how things went and, and adjust. So thank you for stopping by. Um, we will, uh, we will continue this next Saturday at the same time. And as for the, the streams this week, um, I have, uh, switched the, the date for Whispers in the Woods to... Tuesdays um, at around 7. So uh, this coming Tuesday, we'll finally get back to, to Whispers in the Woods unless something happens, but I think they said they're all good. Um, uh, as for tomorrow, I, I don't think Seas of Sand can make it. They're currently in the midst of, of rescheduling to a different day, not Sunday. Um, and so that's why Sundays are kind of hard. So we, we still, still have this, this last Sunday plan. Um, for tomorrow, but it seems like they can't make it. So we're going to try and fix their fix their dates right now. Um, we're thinking maybe Thursdays, though I'm not entirely sure, uh, uh, for next Thursday. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, and we'll, we'll fix that up and get them back in rotation. Uh, I'm still currently um, working on putting the, the new campaigns together, uh, finding groups to... To play them so uh, look forward to those starting soon and uh, we will we will start those up
Uh, they should be fun. Uh, I just have to 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 put together the groups because um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find people. Because uh, I I vet everyone <laughs> closely and make sure that um, we'll get a good group and. I don't want to rush the process, so uh, we'll put those groups together soon, and then uh, we'll get it sorted. So look forward to those starting within uh, probably, hopefully, the month. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's what's going on on the channel. Um, thank you for for stopping by to help me uh, beta test this concept, and uh, there'll be more of this in the future. So take care, everybody. Thank you for, for showing up. Um, is there anywhere to send you guys? Not really. All right, uh, let us, uh, we'll wrap up here. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Take care and uh, have a good night. I will, uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday for more whispers.